Hello everyone, this is Icona Kona, but you can call me Kona for short, and thank you for tuning in for another TF2 tier list. This time, it's for CP Defense. The goal for this tier list is to try to identify the classes that do well or do poorly in a particular type of game mode. This list is divided into three levels, top tier, mid tier, and bottom tier. Now this list may vary from map to map because certain maps tend to favor certain classes, but I generally found that these tier lists work well for this game mode. Just to remind you that this list is for public servers and not for competitive. So let's get started with my tier list for CP or Attack Defend on defense. Starting with the bottom tier, we have the Scout. Man, the Scout is not getting any love on my tier list. <laughs> Don't worry, he'll do better on the other game modes. But the Scout doesn't do so well on CP defense, mainly because he just can't kill multiple people at once. This is really, really important. Like this, by the way. Random crit. Gotta love the random crits. Even right on startup, too. But yeah, the Scout has a very difficult time trying to clear the point, and when you're playing defense, being able to clear the point very quickly is important. The Scout can only get maybe one kill at a time with his scatter gun. He can maybe help out with Mad Milk and such, but generally, Scouts are not used to clear the points by themselves. If you do play as Scout, try to get around the enemy and go to their base. They'll usually have a teleporter entrance set up, and your job as a Scout is to take that out. If you can take it out, you can seriously cripple their momentum, slowing them down considerably. Scouts can also stop a cap midway, so if you see that the enemy is capping the point, you can quickly rush to that point and stand on that to stop the cap. Unfortunately, the Scout doesn't have much health, so you probably won't survive very long there, but at least you tried to stop them. Next in the bottom tier is the Sniper, and similar to CP Offense, on defense, the Sniper doesn't have many lines of sight that will give them a good shot. Many CP masks only have a handful of really good Sniper spots, so once you find them, you tend to stay there. And the thing is, everyone else knows about these spots too. So if you try to stay there and snipe, you're going to get called out, and sooner or later they're going to get you. They're going to either rush you down, or they're going to counter snipe you. Sniping is also difficult because you usually don't have a clear shot to the offensive team's holding position. Let's say Dust Bowl number 2, you know that side tunnel that everyone likes to hold up in with that one-way gate? As a sniper, you clearly don't have a shot on there unless you're standing above on that little platform looking back towards the last point. So you really don't have a lot of clear lines of sight to standing people. Most of the time, you're going to have to try to pick off people who are running, and if you played Sniper, you would know how hard it is to try and pick off people, get headshots on people who are jumping around and running. Moving up a tier to the mid-tier, we have the Spy. Now, the reason why I put Spy in mid-tier and not bottom tier is because Spy is generally easier to use on defense. This is mainly because the offensive team is going to be so busy trying to push forward that you can easily go there and get them while they're running or while they're attacking. An effective use as spy is to take out the enemy teleporters because they'll usually have one, especially when trying to push to the last point. If you can take out their teleporter, just like the scout, you can cripple their momentum. If you're a spy and you happen to come across the offensive team's holding position, like again, that tunnel in Dust Bowl number 2, you may be tempted to try and take it on all by yourself, and all I have to say is, <laughs> good luck buddy. Usually they're holding there and they're just building up Uber, and during that time, they can easily spot you running up and, you know, trying to kill them or sap their stuff. So, being a spy in that situation is very, very difficult. What I recommend to do is actually go in and get some kills when the enemy is busy trying to make a push. They're going to be so preoccupied, so busy trying to capture that point that you can go in there and get a quick stab on the medic or the heavy. The heavy's probably shooting at something else, and so it makes it a lot easier to get kills as spy. Next in the mid tier is everyone's favorite W plus M1 class, the Pyro. But it's not only M1. You can also use some M2. You can air blast, and this is probably where the Pyro is most effective is an air blasting defensively. There are two very effective uses for air blasting as a pyro. The first is just clearing the point. If you see that the enemy is on the point, you can rush the pyro and hey, the pyro has pretty good run speed. 
Rush over there to the point and air blast people off the point to clear it so they stop capping it. You can also clear the point of, let's say, stickies. You know, because those are deadly. If, if demo men just keep on laying stickies there and you just run up there, air blast it first before you jump on the point. The second effective use for air blasting is blowing back ubers. This can be a little bit risky and maybe that's why I don't see a whole lot of people doing it. But if you can blow back an uber, let's say an uber demo man who's trying to take out your sentries, or perhaps an uber heavy who's just trying to kill your team, being a pyro and air blasting can really really save your defense. Now I'm not very good at blowing back ubers, mainly because I don't play a whole bunch of pyro. But for the people who are very experienced in Pyro and know to do this, whenever they blow back Ubers, I thank them. <laughs> because without them, the enemy team would have just destroyed our defense. Next in the mid tier is the Soldier. There's not much to say about the Soldier. Like I've said before, he's a pretty generic class. But the real place the Soldier shines is with a crit, kind of like you saw right there. Luckily, right here, I have actually Prof. Snape healing me a lot, so he gives me crits whenever I need it. I was just kind of fooling around with this, by the way. This weapon is just, oh my gosh, it's so hard to use. <laughs> it's, this is the definition of soldier spam, definitely, because the thing has about three, three degrees of deviation for each rocket, so it's not very accurate, and you literally spam the rockets. But yeah, soldier on defense with crits Krieg. Super, super effective, and the fact that the rockets actually do splash damage is also very important. If you ever see a point being captured, you can start spamming that point with rockets, and you'll get hits on multiple people, hopefully getting multiple kills. The last class in the mid-tier is the Heavy. Now, the Heavy's role is pretty basic. I said this before. The Heavy is the tank of the team. He's the one who you buff to give a lot of health. He's the one that takes a lot of damage and can deal a lot of damage. Kind of like the soldier, if you pair the heavy with the medic who's using a crits creek, oh boy, it's gonna be your your kill feed is gonna light up white. Let me tell you that. It's gonna be so easy to get kills with the heavy with crits creek. And it's multiple kills too, which is exactly what you want on something like playing defense on a CP map. You definitely want the ability to get multiple kills at the same time, or at least getting kills very, very quickly, one after the other. And with a crits heavy, boy, that's the way to do it. The heavy can also act as sort of a distraction. Not like a distraction in the sense of a scout. But more of when the team is pushing, let's say, to the last point. Ah, oh, why did I use the caber? <laughs> I guess I knew I was going to die or something. But yeah, if the enemy is pushing towards the last point, the heavy on your team is going to kind of draw attention. And if you have heavies plus sentries, sometimes it's difficult for the team to decide, oh, which one do I go for first? Do I go for the heavy or do I go for the sentry? By the way, the answer is the sentry if you're Ubered. So, you know, sometimes people will make that mistake and not know which one to go first. They'll be caught in this troubled decision they have to make and they end up wasting time, which is exactly what you want. So that the heavy can be kind of in its own way a good distraction. We have now entered the top tier list when we're starting off with the engineer. Now, as the engineer, you probably want to go with a level 3 sentry if you want to really turtle in on that last point. Level 3 Sentry is the way to go, and with multiple level 3 Sentries, you can lock down that last point from multiple directions. Don't forget to put a Dispenser up as well. The Medic is going to have a difficult time trying to heal everyone on your team, so if you put Dispensers next to your Sentries, at least your teammates will know where to go if they ever need more health or ammo. Teleporters can be useful as well, but they're mainly used for covering the first point, you know, getting your teammates near the first point if you really want to lock the enemy down that far up in the map. If you want to pull back, that's fine. You don't have to worry about those teleporters anymore. Now back to the level 3 sentry. Generally, you want to put a sentry where you can actually see the point. If you put a sentry somewhere where it can't cover that point, you might actually get spy capped. As you can see here, I'm trying to put a, a sentry to cover this last point, but I just suck at engineer and it's really difficult just trying to get the sentry up when there are no real teammates around, especially when, you know, there's a demo man underneath that'll probably get me like that. There's a sniper in the window sniping my stuff. It's really difficult just to get the stuff up sometimes. The next top tier class is the demo man, and of course he's top tier because he has the ability to put stickies on the point and deal huge am amounts of damage. Demo men, <laughs> they're good on offense too. 
But yeah, Demoman can deal huge amounts of damage very quickly, getting multiple hits on multiple people, and that's what you want. If, you, if there's ever a need to clear the point really quickly, put a bunch of stickies down, detonate them all at once, there's a chance that they'll actually fly off the point, but better yet, you'll actually kill them all. Now, demo men are not only good at dealing damage, but you can actually drive the offensive team back just by spamming some traps or spamming those pipe grenades. You will not believe how useful those pipe grenades are at controlling the enemy's movement. If you spam a whole bunch of them, I call them rollers because I usually get killed by them when they're rolling. And when I spam those rollers like this, luckily I don't I try not to fall for it, but uh, you can actually drive the offensive team back a little bit by spamming those rollers because they won't want to advance and step on them. So you can actually just spam a whole bunch of those, set up traps. You can actually set up obvious traps so that when they see it, they have to step back. So it's not only good for dealing damage, it's just good for driving that team back. The last class in the top tier is, of course, the Medic. Every team needs a Medic. You can see here I'm playing as a Chris Krieg Medic. Um, by the way, here you can see there's a Spy. I try to go for the taunt kill, and yeah, I miss. <laughs> I think he's smart enough to actually move, so yeah, there you go. But yeah, every team needs a medic, and especially on the defensive team. As you go near the last point, your respawn times are going to get very long, up to 25 seconds, and no one likes to go through those 25 second respawn times and just watch the point being capped. By the way, another spy, try to go for the kill. Mr. Toady, stand still so I can taunt kill you. <laughs> Ah, <sighs> nice dab, nice dab. But yeah, defensive medic, very important for keeping your team alive so that you don't have to go through those really long respawn times. That's usually why the defensive team loses. You know, your team gets wiped and all you can do is sit in spectator mode and watch as the offensive team captures the point. It really, really sucks. So that is my tier list for CP defense. This is attack defend, not the 5 CP like you see a lot in competitive. I'm going to actually have another tier list for that game mode. Now, what do you guys think about this tier list? What is your tier list for CP defense? You know, leave a comment below, or better yet, you can make a video response. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and have a nice day. Spy cap, spy cap, someone get the last point! The last... Oh. <laughs>